Okay, so we've covered H.264, which is the compression technology that you'll be using to produce for pretty much all the eye devices that you'll be uh, targeting. Here's the overview of what we'll be covering next. One is video podcast, where you're creating um, video that's going to be distributed to iPods via tethered delivery. So this is via iTunes or via directly from your computer, but but you're you're using a cable. You're not sending it wirelessly or via cellular. And then the second category is streaming to iDevices, which we'll cover after we cover the, the video podcast area. Before we get there, I think it's important to understand that, you know, iDevices, you know, is really a pretty diverse group of technologies. And you know, I'll say that th this is a pretty confusing chart, but if you looked at this for BlackBerry or for Android, it would be even more confusing. It's nice that there's only really about three or four relevant targets you need to worry about when you're when you're producing for iDevices. And if you if you care about everybody, so looking at the extreme left of this chart, the original iPod pre fifth generation, and you know, let's look at the, the the categories on the left. We've got the screen resolution, and that's the screen resolution of the device itself. The aspect ratio obviously the aspect ratio of the device. The codec, um, the original iPod supports H.264, but it's a maximum data rate of 768 kilobits per second. And even more important, it's a maximum video resolution of 320 by 240. So if you produce an H.264 file at a resolution larger than 320 by 240, uh, it's probably not going to play on the oldest iPods that are out there. And we'll cover, you know, we'll look at the decision, do you care about these iPods in a second? But, you know, you just need to know that if you produce it larger than 320 by 240, um, it's not going to play on this class of iPods. And then some additional, you know, we covered a lot of this stuff a few moments ago, uh, but looking at the frame rate, 30 frames per second, that's pretty obvious. And then the profile and level, that's what we covered. The, the oldest iPods, can only handle uh, H.264 video encoded to the baseline profile. And, and as you can see, if you look over to the iPod Nano Classic and the iPod Touch iPhone, and that's the first generation, you can see that those are baseline devices as well. Uh, now, going back to the iPod, the original iPod Pre 5G, we see we've got a AAC low complexity audio, maximum data rate of 160 kilobits per second, and it can take um, 48 kilohertz stereo audio in the three container formats that are shown. Moving over one class, and this is both the iPod Nano Classic and the iPod Touch iPhone, we see that, you know, let's scroll down to the codec specs, and we see the video codec, both are H.264, maximum data rate of 2.5 megabits per second for both the iPod Nano and Classic and the iPod Touch iPhone. Uh, frame rate's 30 frames per second, and, and up one level, we see that both of those devices can play video that's encoded at 640 by 480. Now, why would you want to encode at 640 by 480 if you've got only a 320 by 240 screen resolution for the iPod Nano and Classic and a 480 by 320 screen resolution for the iPod Touch and iPhone? Well, the, some of these devices had NTSC output ports, so you could actually play video encoded for these devices and uh, transfer it over to these devices on a, on a television set. So if you were going to do that, that's where 640 by 480 might come in handy. In addition, if you're looking at the, um, the 16 by 9-ish screen on the iPod Touch iPhone, you know, 640 by 360 video is going to look better than, say, 320 by 180. So this is the first, this is where you're saying, oh, goodness, do I want to, do I want to encode at 640 by 480 and have video that looks better on these devices, or do I want to remain compatible with the pre-5G um, iPod, which can only take 320 by 240? Of course, if you produce a 320 by 240 video, it will play on all these devices, including the iPhone 4, iPod Touch, and all the iPads. But, you know, it's going to look pretty grainy if you scale to full screen on an iPad 1 or iPad 2.